Sastung Shantam Sanirvanam Akatyam Sukamutamam Ajam Ajena Gyeyena Sarvagyang Parichakshata. This highest bliss is based upon the realization of self. It is peace, identical with liberation, indescribable, and unborn. It is further described as the omniscient Brahman because it is one with the unborn self, which is the object sought by realized knowledge. This bliss, which is the highest reality characterized by realization of Atman, is centered in the self. It is all peace characterized by the cessation of all evils and suffering. It is the same as liberation. It is indescribable as nobody is able to describe it, for it is totally different from all objects. This ultimate bliss is directly realized by the perfect yogis. It is unborn because it is not produced like anything resulting from empirical perceptions. It is identical with the unborn self, which is the object sought by knowledge, jnana. The knowers of Brahman describe this bliss verily as the omniscient Brahman, that is, as it is identical with that reality, which is omniscient. Namaste. So this shloka, which is the next to last in the third chapter of the Karika, the Mandukya Upanishad is basically summed up. This shloka, the preceding one and the next one, are like the core of the whole Upanishad. So what is it about this knowledge of the self? Well, it is beginningless. Once you realize it, it's like, duh, I have always been this. Nothing actually changes when you attain self-realization. But you simply realize <laughs> what it has been all along. The reality is beginningless and endless. It is not produced. In other words, it is, it is not born or transformed out of something else. It is the substrate, the basis of all other realities. So once understanding this, there's no more suffering because there is nobody to suffer and there are no changes or qualities that can induce suffering. So this is the highest knowledge. This is jnana. Jnana means not just knowledge, but realized knowledge. Seeing directly, darshanam, or prakash, seeing directly the reality of Brahman, which is in everything and of everything, and from which everything is coming. So this is what we want. This is the object of the whole path. This is the purpose of yoga, the purpose of self-realization, the purpose of really human life. So without this realization, really one wastes life, the opportunity of life, to attain this perfect omniscient knowledge. Why is it called omniscient? It's not that a person who attains self-realization knows everything, you know, like the balance in your checkbook <laughs> and what you did last night. <laughs> it's like, who cares? <laughs> but no, the person who attains self-realization knows Brahman. And since Brahman is the cause of everything, the origin of everything, he knows everything. Try to understand. Sarva Kalvidang Brahma, the Upanishad says, everything is Brahman. 
And this is called Sarvajnana. Knowing Brahman is knowing everything. It is all knowledge because it is the root of all and the substance of all. Pure, unconditioned awareness. Without this awareness, there could be no consciousness. And without consciousness, there could be no experience. And without experience, there is no life. Huh? What would be the point of having a creation that goes on like a robot, mechanically, huh? like the scientists believe, controlled by chance? <laughs> it's such a stupid idea. What is the point of it? It has no purpose. It's not... It doesn't even please itself, what to speak of anyone else. So, of course, the whole world now following this dumb scientific, so-called pseudo-scientific religion, which is really what it is, just a belief, has become addicted to alienation and anomy, which is alienation from oneself. Alienation and anomie lead to existential suffering. And so the existential philosophers, who were actually pretty good at defining the problem, the human condition, huh? they called, like Jean-Paul Sartre, said there's no exit. There is no exit from this existential condition. Well, that's all right, but... If one simply recognizes the actual situation, you wouldn't want to exit. Because Brahman is bliss. Specifically, it is the absence of suffering. We don't need happiness if there's no suffering. Happiness is there in distinction from unhappiness, isn't it? So we need happiness in the material world to counteract the unhappiness. But in Brahman, there is no happiness or unhappiness. It's not measurable because it has no boundaries, it has no dimensions, it has no qualities. See, it is simply awareness of awareness. We've been over this countless times on this channel, but it seems that people don't get it and they still want to treat Brahman as an object. Well, realization of Brahman is certainly an object in the sense of a purpose, an objective, a goal that one should strive to attain. And what does this mean? What's the difference between Brahman and realization of Brahman? It's simply that Brahman is always there, or I should say here. Brahman is always this. And so in conditioned consciousness, Brahman appears as that. And in fact, in the Upanishads, the word tat, that, is often used as a code for Brahman. Because in conditioned consciousness, one considers oneself as separate, an individual. And so, from that point of view, Brahman is something else. Brahman is that. And this refers to the mundane identity, the body, and so forth. But in self-realization, Brahman becomes this. And this is everything. So... That leads to unlimited knowledge. If everything is consciousness and Brahman is the root of consciousness, pure awareness, then by knowing Brahman or by Brahman knowing itself, there is knowledge of everything. See, this is called reasoning from first principles. And this is the methodology in this third chapter of Mandukya Upanishad. Reasoning from first principles brings us to the same identical conclusion as uh, descending reasoning based on the scriptures. See, there's two kinds of logic. 
Aroha, which means ascending or inductive logic, and Avaroha, descending or deductive logic. Interpretation of scriptures is deductive. It's descending, Avaroha. But one uh, who uses reason to uh, come to certain conclusions based on the principles is using Aroha or ascending knowledge inductive logic. And this is okay as long as it's an agreement with the scriptures. But if one reaches conclusions that are opposed to the scriptures, then you know you made a mistake. See, this is the problem with the scientists <laughs> and material philosophers. They reach conclusions that are opposed to the scriptures, but they don't check themselves. They say, I'm right. Huh? Just like in our parallel series on the Satikhanda of Rudra Sanghita in Shiva Purana, Brahma and his son Daksha get in trouble because of insulting Rudra on account of thinking of Rudra as Brahma's son which is a conclusion that is in opposition to the Vedic scriptures, which state that Shiva, and in his incarnation as Rudra, is Ishwara. Ishwara means the controller. He's actually the god. He's actually the one who's in control of the universe, <laughs> not Brahma or anyone else. Even Shakti, says that I am his slave in all respects. Even though he grants her the power and the autonomy to create the world as she likes, he delegates everything. <laughs> He's just the Ishwara. He's just the controller. But, you know, he's sitting in meditation on his self and perfectly satisfied. Everything else is delegated to various other personalities. So this is Shiva. This is God. Not that he personally takes an interest in every little thing. <laughs> Although if one approaches him with devotion, he can grant all these realizations easily effortlessly. And you will find that if you approach him in purity, without any separate motive, he's very friendly, very welcoming. He'll accept you with open arms and even allow you to merge with his self. And then all these conclusions, these esoteric realizations from the Upanishads are revealed effortlessly. So realization of Shiva, devotion to Shiva, is the key that turns the, the big lock. And when that lock opens, the doors swing wide and one can realize all the Vedic knowledge perfectly and clarity and attain the highest bliss. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.